Hey, hey, we're back and we have stripped this new ride down to the bare bones. Still working on a name. I'm on the hunt. I got a couple ideas in my head. Stay tuned in the future for that. Basically, you guys, a uh, couple issues right here. It's pretty wobbly. So I got to figure out what's going on with my pedal system right here. Uh, I am not 100% sure. Hopefully, it's just a quick uh, little. Tightening system, and we'll go from there. Everything looks really good. Really excited for this little setup. Hey, so just some things I wanted to show you before I really got deep diving. I've done most of the cleaning on this, um, so the video that you saw with me flying in and all that jazz, it was really solid, and that's how it, I got it. I test drove it one time, and then I got it home, did that quick little video next to the other bikes, and then I started taking it apart today and this is the kind of stuff I was running into is that's just a chunk of dirt I literally took it off and put it off to the side just to show you guys but that is literally just a chunk of dirt that somehow just molded its way in there to fit just perfectly it's like a perfect fit so the maintenance wasn't quite done on this bike but that's okay I didn't expect much I just for two hundred dollars for a bike most of the work already done and just a motor that runs, a Sutec, by the way. So that was kind of something I really was like, can't pass that up. It's in the budget. So some other things to note was just, uh, oh, I'm sorry, jumping ahead of myself, is this carburetor. It's pretty dirty inside and outside. It was pretty, uh, I already wiped it up pretty good, but it was pretty bad, guys, not going to lie. That's... And then uh, last little issue we have here is we have a little bit of wobble in the actual crank. You can probably mostly hear it rather than see it. So life expectancy on the engine, not 100%. We're going to clean it up. We're going to dump a little bit of gas there, swish it around, get it out, let it completely dry. We are back and we have completed the cleaning process, everyone. We made it. It was a... It was a little bit of a work. Yeah, there was definitely some grime in that motor. I'm not gonna lie. So, looking forward, I just wanna talk about what tools I used to get to this point, guys. So let's go ahead and journey this way. While putting this motor together, I had to go ahead and construct some more gaskets because the gaskets tore as I was taking them off. And this is what I use. I just use a little template out of cardboard for most of my gaskets and just some good gasket paper. Make sure that it is gas and oil resistant. Moving on down, some files. I did use some small files to do a little bit of work on the cylinder itself, mostly on the intake. Just a little tiny bit of 
um, persuasion with those guys, just cleaning it up, taking off any burrs, anything like that. Multiple the wrenches, a lot of 10 millimeter, 14 millimeter for the head bolts. Allen keys, of course, on everything on this motor. Sometimes you will use a Phillips screwdriver, but most motors this day and age are using the Phillips, or excuse me, the <clears throat> those type of bolts and stuff like that. So that really helps out. Of course, screwdrivers for days. I like to use the blue uh, Loctite. I just, I feel the blue just holds better. I don't know why. I've used red a couple times and it always seems that things shift. I don't know if it's a heat thing or I need to get a better brand of red uh, Loctite, but I've been just using the blue, which I'm almost out of. My toothbrush, of course, for cleaning, and I use this little brass brush as well. This kind of gets some of the other fine particulates that wouldn't come off. And we have the compliance tools, as you guys know. These babies are 100% necessary for job completion. <laughs> we'll probably have to see old Bessie here in a bit for the cylinder. It's not going on quite smoothly, but uh, it just needs a little pop to get it on there. Looking forward, guys. We're just gonna go ahead and slap this motor together. This little Sioux Tech. I'm pretty excited. I just believe by cleaning up the engine and properly getting some grease in some places that obviously need it, we'll be able to put much more miles on this motor. It looks okay. I'm not gonna say that we're gonna get a, you know, 2,000 miles out of this thing, but maybe if we can get 1,000 miles out of it, I'll be super happy. And it'll just be nice to have a motor that I know that will actually work and I have a bicycle that is basically ready to go. So that's where we're at, guys. Stay tuned, we're gonna slap together, maybe do a little time lapse and all that jazz. Alrighty, here we go. Before we move forward with putting the motor together, I wanted to quickly go over some stuff that I did so you are on the same page as me. First off, I cut the white wire. This little white wire does drain a little bit of electricity. Sometimes people will hook up lights and stuff. I don't recommend it because it's gonna rob what little power the motor does produce. So I just cut it off, put some black electrons tape on there. I'm just gonna stick it down in there nice and tight. And we will never have to worry about that again. Next, I did have to replace two of the head bolts. These are two new ones on this side. They are a little bit thicker and a little bit taller but I don't think it's gonna be an issue. They're the same thread, all that jazz. It does make the cylinder going on a little bit tight just because they are bigger bolts, but I've already put it on once, so it should be just fine. Next, I went ahead and, as I already said, built some gaskets. So this is gonna be my intake gasket. Looks all right, not bad. Next, this is actually a base gasket that I have for the cylinder that I purchased. These are just like, they just come in like little packs of I believe five on Amazon. They come with also the cylinder gasket on the top right there, which is just aluminum. Might look into getting some copper or brass, but I think they're just fine for now. Next, I went and had a dig in for another gasket for my exhaust. I don't know if you can see in there, but this cylinder does have a little tiny bridge back there. It's really thin and it's really tucked away and it doesn't go all the way down the cylinder exhaust port, which is interesting. The ones I've seen in the past, they go all the way down. So I'm probably just gonna leave it. It'll help the rings go across that cylinder nicely. This cylinder, or excuse me, this gasket's also been ported out, patched, or excuse me, port matched basically to line up pretty well. The one I took off was complete toast. Next, we got this head right here. This is a head off of a different motor. The other one was completely gunked out and just looked so bad and it didn't have this ring around it. Oh, I forget the name of the ring on top of my head, but that ring is really important because it helps the squish band and you need that ring to the most part specifically you can sand them down to get a little bit more compression on these heads but you do want to keep a little bit of that ring if you can to the most part i've seen people do it where they sand it completely flat runs just fine i just think that this uh right here is a different slightly different material and so it just helps with the overall sealing of the motor especially that top end lastly all i did right here was cut some excuse me drill some holes into the air box 
just to get direct flow. The way that these red boxes work is they actually pull air from the back and that's where all your heat is, that's where all your grime is and everything is getting ripped up from there and you get more stuff inside the carburetor. So I just drilled an obnoxious amount of holes into this air box just so we can get some more airflow directly on the back. I think that's about it. I will be moving the needle on the throttle up two notches. It has four notches. It was on the lowest notch, so that should help out immensely on my um, three to, or excuse me, you know, my quarter throttle. So we should uh, see quite a bit of improvement with that. So this is a completely clean inside and out as well. Alrighty, guys. Well, that wraps it up. Let's get going. Okay, guys. I have headphones in. I'm gonna listen to book. We're gonna go ahead and just get it, okay? No questions asked. Go ahead and leave comments of stuff I need to do in the better in the future. All that jazz. Here we go. Whew. Gotta like tune you guys out so I can do my thing, you know? <laughs> Hey guys, I had to pause the video because I just realized that I put the piston on backwards. So you get to watch me go ahead and uh, take that off and put it back on. Hey, good thing I caught it though. It's really important that you get that correct. So here we go, stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so real quick, if you look back there, you see that little tiny bubble looking thing on this side? Let's see if I can get something to point at. If I get this little tiny tool, I don't know if you can see that, but if I go back there and if I point to where that little bubble is, that here and here on the other side, on those big fat bubble things, that's where your pins are. Your pins to your pistons are right there. Oh geez, your pins to your pistons are right there and that's where your rings actually come together. So that's how you can tell. So if those pins are on the back side of your piston, they need to go towards the intake portion. Don't trust the arrows on the top. They sometimes misprint those. I think that's been explained a thousand times. So what you want to do is make sure that those pins are facing back towards the intake side. So here we go, re-putting on the piston the correct way.
guys, we got a motor put together. Not too shabby. Sutek, baby. See what you got, girl? Oh, yeah. Cool, guys. I'm so excited. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stay tuned as I get it mounted onto the bike. I don't know if it's going to make it to the next episode or not, but uh, here we are, guys.